my name is Maria Brago. I am 32 years old. I am an NMOSD patient. Hi, my name is Wendy Erler, and I lead the patient experience team for Alexion rare disease, which is part of AstraZeneca. NMOSD stands for neuromyelitis optica, which um, by definition, the SD part means spectrum disorder. So it's really a disease that presents with a wide range of symptoms. And what that means is the impact on patients can be very different. So sometimes it takes a long time to be diagnosed. Um, but NMOSD as a condition is often misdiagnosed for those reasons and um, causes a very difficult journey for the people who are suffering from it. It's an inflammatory disorder of the central nervous system, and it's characterized by severe immune-mediated demyelation. And this can cause all sorts of problems across the optic nerves and the spinal cord which then leads to very um, significant disabilities for some people, whether it's with vision or the ability to walk. The disease is characterized by attacks that come out of nowhere. So people share their experience with us and they talk about having a very normal day and then all of a sudden being unable to walk or to see. So it's very, very scary. There definitely are a cluster of symptoms, but blurry vision or blindness in one or both eyes is, is one of the more critical symptoms. Weakness or paralysis in the legs and arms is another. The challenge with those symptoms is that it really can be misdiagnosed, particularly as MS. One of the things that we hear in our patient listening sessions is patients report a lot of nausea and uncontrollable vomiting or sort of regular, really problematic and noticeable hiccuping. So those are some symptoms that might add more to the differential diagnosis. So I was diagnosed seven months after I um, went blind in both of my eyes. So seven months at that time was a very relatively quickly diagnosis. But because they didn't know much about the disease, I, I incurred disability from it. I was 14 when I went blind and uh, 15 when I was diagnosed. So when I went blind, of course, I went to a neurologist and the neurologist like, well, I think it's something uh, more than what I can handle. So they sent me to an adult neurologist and then after after the adult neurologist ran the test and it still came back negative for the antibody. After that, I, I kind of didn't know where to go or, or what to even think. But since the doctor at the time uh, felt um, that I did have a uh, NMO um, and she kept testing for it, then after that, then I kind of was able to kind of wrap my head around to like, okay, now I have this, like, what, where do I go? What can I do? And I figured at the time, you know what? I'm just going to have to take treatment for a little bit and I'll be able to return to my normal life because I was so young, I guess. I didn't think it was going to be like a lifelong diagnosis or disease. So, I mean, I had the, the, the thoughts of it just being, I'll be down for a little bit and you know, I'll, I'll be able to take medicine and I'll be okay. But then when I realized, no, it's, it's a disease. Um, this is going to be my new life. I kind of just try to figure out ways on what would work for me and how I could get through it. And I've always had like the mindset of, I want to get awareness out there. I don't want to have to have another person go through what I went through. So I've always wanted to get awareness and be an advocate for this disease. And I didn't know anyone for 11 years with this disease. So it was, it, it was a learning curve, but I, I'm glad that I, I've learned about this disease. I have learned the symptoms and um, I 
help another person not have to go through what I went through. Physicians that see patients earlier with a myriad of symptoms and then um, don't either know about NMOSD, which is why sessions like this are so important to raise awareness, probably haven't seen it, maybe haven't even heard of the condition. Um, diagnosis is usually made in a neurology setting, so whether it's with neurologists or neuro-ophthalmologists. In Marie's case, as she said, she presented with very significant and severe blindness, so that led to the path of diagnosis a little bit more quickly. Many times patients are misdiagnosed for years as having multiple sclerosis. So that, that's a common misdiagnosis. The antibody, that's the AQP4 antibody. Um, and that is a test that's done to um, add further evidence that the problem might be NMOSD. But Marie mentioned hers was negative and a negative result for the AQP4 IgG antibody indicates the absence of the antibody, but does not rule out a diagnosis of NMOSD. So a little bit more um, complexity. Other clinical criteria can be met to confirm a diagnosis. Most often the test is run by neurologists. So if you think about the impact with the spinal cord and the optic nerve, that's usually where those types of tests might be run. Um, maybe sometimes with primary mm -hmm. care physicians, but even to Marie's story of her, her neurologist saying, I'm not equipped for this. I think most people um, are getting the testing and the final diagnosis in neurology. The test has been improved too. When I was diagnosed, um, I believe the test had just been out for, I want to say maybe two and a half, three years at the most. So from it being developed back then to now, I mean, it's improved a lot and they're able to detect those antibodies um, better. There's a um, wide variety of approaches to managing NMOSD as you can probably imagine in a condition that has such a wide ranging impact on patients' physical ability as well as ability to see. There are approved treatments for NMOSD, which when Marie was diagnosed, that was not the case. So a lot of advancements have been made in research and development um, just in the recent few years. So it really is a success story from the perspective that research has been advancing and medicines have been made available. So here in my state, um, there's not an NMO um, expert. So I have to travel every six months, seven hours away from my house to receive care. I'm blessed that I am able to do that, but there are others that probably might not have that luxury. So I like feel very strongly on educating everyone and anyone about NMOSD because if we can educate more doctors, just the community, I believe that we could help patients that cannot travel far for care. Say definitely learn your body, rest when you need to rest and build a, a great communication with your neurologist, with your doctors, build a great team, and always know that you have a community of support that will help immensely just to get through the disease. You'll have bad days, but um, don't let those bad days take away from the good days. There is a, a few foundations out there. There's a Samara Foundation, Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation, and the Siegel Rare Neuroimmune Association, or known as SRNA. All the organizations have great support groups. They have webinars, and you know they really just educate the community. And they have like the virtual support groups, which is great. Uh, the Smart Foundation and Guthy Jackson um, Foundation have uh, patient days, which those are great because you can meet other 
patients um, that are going through what you're going through. The SRNA I know has also like their, it's, it's not a called patient day, but it, it is like they have um, events too. All of the groups are helping to advance further research, uncover more opportunities and resources for patients. We work very closely with these organizations and really lean on them to teach us what we need to know at Alexion about the experiences of people in the community. I think in developing the NMOSD short film, probably the most powerful insight we learned from the organizations as well as the patients like Marie who participated is the impact of community on their experience has been, it, it sounds sort of obvious, but the impact of knowing a community and being connected to a community has been life-changing, um, particularly for the three that were profiled in the short film. And um, Craig shared that he didn't know there was anybody like him that had an MOSD. And so that these organizations really offer the opportunity to bring these communities together in so many ways. I, I guess them seeing us three or sharing our story with the community has inspired the community to get out there, have those uncomfortable talks with the doctors, because I believe the community has felt that they are not alone. What they have experienced in the past, us three have experienced. And so I've been told that it's inspired them. Marie, Craig, and Alex, came together in this film while they shared their individual experiences, there was so much that was similar and just life wishes. You know, um, Alex was really candid about her deep passion to have a baby and Craig has little, little children. And, and that gave them Alex hope and Craig really bonded with Alex in that. And Alex and Marie have such a similar story. It's I think just being able to see this cross-section of people that if you met them individually, wouldn't believe all this commonality existed. And then when you break down the barriers, it, it really does exist. Mm -hmm.